A, rude. Hmm, it definitely could be rude, but I feel like that's a little too strong from what I read. B, impatient. That's a definite possibility. I'm just gonna cross out rude. C, pleased. He's definitely not pleased with him. The context clues of the story tell me that he's showing him that he's not really happy. And D, distant. Hmm, that could be true too. The only reason why I'm gonna go with impatient is he definitely interacted with him by telling him the story. So distant implies that he never talked to him at all. So I'm just gonna go like that and call it a day. 13. What best describes the stranger's motivation for telling Bullard the story about Thomas Edison's dog? Um, a. To correct a mistaken impression. B. To repay kindness. C. To gain revenge. D. To discourage Bullard from talking to him. Okay, we're looking for what best describes the stranger's motivation. That means that there might be more than one right answer, but we want to find the best answer. A. To correct a mistaken impression. Um... Let's see, um, it could be the mistaken impression is about who invented the light bulb. That could be. B, to repay a kindness. Mm, there's no real repaying there. C, to gain revenge. No evidence of revenge. And D, to discourage Bullard from talking to him. Okay, realistically, the stranger got up and left trying to avoid Bullard. He starts the story when Bullard gets really, really annoying. So it seems like the stranger told this crazy story just to get Bullard to leave him alone. And also, it's kind of unlikely that the story is true, so it doesn't seem like he's really trying to correct a mistake. So it's definitely D, okay? 14. The reason that Sparky was torn to bits by a pack of dogs was that A, they were jealous of him because Sparky knew Tom Edison, B, Sparky was responsible for revealing their great secret, C, he upset Tom Edison's intelligence analyzer, or D, they mistook him for a dog they hated. Hmm. Well, again, I'm going to use my context from the story. I'm going to look at my notes. But then I'm going to find out that they definitely didn't mistake him for a dog they hated. And I'm going to think about the rest of them. He upset Tom Edison's intelligence analyzer? He just ate some of his stuff. I don't think we knew anything. I don't know. Sparky was responsible for revealing their great secret. That seems pretty reasonable. And they were jealous of him because Sparky too knew Tom Edison. This is a rough one, but based on the context of the story, I'm gonna pick B, and I would be right. 15, there's enough information in the story to conclude that dogs are most likely to be A, protective about their intelligence, B, jealous of humans, C, not as smart as people, or D, angry about the way they are treated. Hmm. This is going to be a rough one. So there might be more than one because it says most likely. To protect, protective about their intelligence. That seems reasonable. Jealous of humans. Well, if they were jealous of humans, why would they eat another dog? So I'm going to eliminate that. C, not as smart as people. Hmm. Angry about the way they were treated. Well, not as smart as people. We know that's untrue because he showed he was smart as Thomas Edison. So, you know what, I think they're being protective, so I'm gonna choose A. All right, so we have about two minutes left, which means about 30 seconds per question. So we're gonna move a little bit quicker. Uh, number 16, based on the information in the story, a reader can predict that Bullard will most likely, A, rename his dog Sparky, B, attempt to build a lightning bulb, or a light bulb with carbonized cotton, C, to repeat the story to everyone he meets, or D, keep the dog secret. Well, looking back at the text, I see that there's a lot of evidence that Bullard loves telling stories, okay? So the more interesting the story, the more likely it is that he'll tell it, right? So I definitely think that it's got to be um, repeat the story to everyone he meets. Number 17, read this sentence from page 73. Opportunities knocking down every door in the country trying to get in. Personification in this sentence suggests, and we know from our class that personification means giving human attributes to something that's not human. All right. A, Bullard feels that people are unsafe in their own homes. B, Bullard believes that people today have more chances to be successful than he did. C, Bullard believes that there are not enough opportunities out there. Or D, Bullard believes that opportunities are hidden and hard to find. Well, if they're knocking down every house in the country, they're not, they're not hidden or hard. 
Bullard believes that there's not enough opportunities out there. Well, he says they're knocking down every door, so again, I'm going to get rid of that because that's obviously wrong. Bullard believes that people today have more chances to be successful than he did, or Bullard feels that people are unsafe in their own homes. Knocking down doors with opportunity doesn't necessarily feel like we feel that people are unsafe, but I'm going to choose B based on context, and I'm correct. And I just want to say one more thing about 17. Um, when you go back in the text, you see that right before this sentence, he talks about how people today have so much more opportunity than I had. So if you just go back and check the text, that's the answer right there. You just have to make sure to go back. 18 says, which word best describes the tone of the overall story? The tone is the attitude of the author. So the author, Kurt Vonnegut, his attitude towards the story, could it be fanciful, didactic, sardonic, or absurd? Hmm. I know fanciful means um, imaginative and, and, uh, and uh, you know, fun. So I'm going to say that's a maybe because the story is very imaginative and it's a lot of fun. Didactic, I don't even know what that means. We'll see if, we'll see if we need it later on. Sardonic. I'm not sure what it means, but I feel like I remember seeing this word in class and it was like sarcastic or angry or something like that. It just, it just doesn't feel right. And absurd. Absurd means like completely ridiculous. And the story is a little ridiculous, but I don't think absurd is the best word for it. I definitely feel like fanciful is the best way to describe it. Number 19. What word best describes the about the author section on page 74? Again, I'm going to underline best describes because that's the key. Okay, A, flattering, B, critical, C, objective, D, matter of fact. It's going to be very important that I read this at this time because I'm basically out of time. So I'm going to have to very quickly run through and think, okay, it's a story about the author who wrote the story. So the people who wrote the story picked this story. That means they probably like it. So I'm definitely going to get rid of critical. Um, again, objective might be, but it's a story about a story that they liked, so they're probably going to be a little more over the top about it. Matter of fact, mm, no, I'm going to choose the most positive thing on the page. Flattering, A, and I'm correct, and I'm done. And also, in that, and I just have 30 seconds to double check, in the, in the about the author, they talk about all the amazing things and awards that Kurt Vonnegut got. And so, it's not objective because it kind of is a little bias in his favor, and that's what really makes it flattering. So when you take the HSA, remember how important it is to carefully read the text and take notes. It takes a long time, that's true, but you'll be able to answer the questions a lot quicker and I guarantee you'll get more questions right. So remember, stunt the HSA or, or you're, you're going to be stunting those projects. projects.